Hi, Matt here again. Uh, welcome to another Golden Nuggets. Um, I'm recording this on Tuesday afternoon. The sun's shining here in Hackney, uh, as it has been almost continuously for quite a while now, it seems. Um, the big meeting this week, of course, is York's Dante Festival, uh, featuring the Oaks Trial tomorrow, the Musidora, and the Dante itself on Thursday, and the Yorkshire Cup Friday. It's a cracking race meeting and I thought we'd have a look at a few things on the site in relation to this great meeting. So enough of my chops, let's look at the screen. Okay so uh, let's crack on to tomorrow, Wednesday the 11th. We've got the York card here, you can see it's a 2467 race card, um, some good field sizes, so some tricky punting conundrums, conundra? probably conundrums uh, to follow. We start with a mile and a half handicap, um, the Jorvik handicap. Uh, again, a tough race. Just before we do that, a couple of things that I want to share with you. Um, let's see if I can open this in a different tab. Um, we've got some TV trends and Dante stakes, uh, specifically trends here. So if you're, if you like sort of profile filters then do have a look in the pointer section on the home page here uh, for some trends stuff i'm also going to share with you um probably the draw analyzer york's a bit of a quirky one on draw and um, i think there's some there's, there's going to be some value us having a quick look at some of um the components there so that's in a second um just on the cards in a more general sense I'm very pleased that um, we've resolved our odds issues. Uh, let's find a reasonable sized field in the future. Here we go. So um, as you can see, we now have um, quite a large array of bookmakers, uh, as many as 18. Um, and you can have them fractional, decimal, you can sort by odds and name and so on. Um, there was an issue until this afternoon with the uh, default sortation not being um, favourite to long shot, just being <coughs> not quite arbitrary. In actual fact, what it was doing it was sorting by the best odds numerator. <laughs> and so that is the first, the number before the uh, the slash in the best odds column, essentially. Um, so if you were wondering why it was slightly quonky, that's the answer. Uh, now it's sorting correctly, so that's good news. As I said when we put this live, I was desperate to get the odds back on site because um, it's obviously a massive miss not having that. Uh, and I wanted to fix forward any little issuettes that were still manifest. Um, so that's one of them. The other one is you'll notice there's no um, shortening, drifting, blue, pink indicators on here at the moment. Um, that is on our list. We'll get that sorted uh, hopefully this week. Uh, and the final thing that I'm aware of is that if you're looking on a mobile device, um, historically since we created the mobile setup, we only had two bookmakers on there. So they're kind of indicative prices, really. Um, so uh, uh, space constraints were not an issue um, in the odds tab at that time. Now we've got a much more fulsome selection of bookmaker prices. Obviously, we need to put in some vertical scroll on the mobile. And that's probably going to take a little bit longer to get sorted out just because I don't want to derail my developer from what he's working on at the moment. Um, so with all that said, I'm glad to have this um, a proper odds provision now. Oh, just one other thing on this. Um, you can you, you can click through to the bookmaker on any of these, but they're not affiliate links that they'll basically take you to the horse racing landing page. Um, for whichever bookmaker you click. So we're not affiliated. Our, our commercial endeavours come through um, you lovely people subscribing to hopefully the great information that we provide generally. And we publish odds as a service to you, not as a revenue generating scheme for us. Um, that differentiates us from all of the others, um, because mainly because I believe our data provision is better than all of the others. Um, Hopefully some of you at least agree with that. <laughs> anyway, uh, um, 
uh, high horse back in its stable. Let's get back to York tomorrow. So the first race tomorrow is um, the Jorvik Handicap, as we said. And um, just before we start looking at the races, I, I think it's important. I, I do mention this quite often, and, that, <laughs> and that's because I believe it's important. Um, we really want to kind of contextualize ourselves. We want to essentially do a recce of what's going on. So we know the ground is going to be, or we believe the ground is going to be good tomorrow. And the sun, uh, actually, it's quite an overcast day. I think it's probably just be a, a drying day. Um, but if you're not familiar with the course confirmation or constitution at York, do click this York course info um, link or indeed any link for whatever race course you're looking at and familiarize yourself with the the image in the top right corner. So it, this is this is the layout um, because it's important. You, the, the positioning of the start, uh, whether there are hills, the number of bends these kind of things are all material when you're thinking about when you're trying to bring data to life we have a tendency just to look at um, you know tables or charts and obviously they're revealing in themselves but if you can if you can ground those numbers in sort of three-dimensional reality that's definitely going to help you understand them so for example Dave Renham has uh, mentioned the draw bias at York um, on the uh, at the mile and mile and a mile and a furlong uh, distances, and and the reason for that we can see here is this pretty sharp bend, um, not too long after they start out. So particularly in bigger fields uh, where they they tend to go quite fast early because of the size of the field and jostling for a position. If you're drawn wide, you're you're going to you're going to live a charmed life or you're going to go very fast early to get into a position where you can you can take this corner efficiently so you're either going to go wide or you're going to use petrol early or you're going to take back and wait for the others to go <laughs> go on and, and kind of drop in behind them and then ride for luck obviously you've forfeited ground there so whichever way whichever approach you have from a wide draw over a mile and a mile and a furlong at York this bend is probably going to compromise you so that's these are the kind of things that you know when you look at a, a nine furlong draw bias it it doesn't in or of itself kind of make sense to us because we expect draw biases to be over shorter trips but as soon as you overlay that information onto the course configuration you can quickly see um, you know the practicalities of the situation um, at longer trips, so here this 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 is a mile and a half race. So you can see they start essentially they start right at the intersection um, of the back straight here. So they they do the full back straight, taking this bend, and then the long home straight, which is about five furlong long home straight. Um, there is a bias here. It's not a draw bias. It's actually a pace bias, and where most um, pace biases tend to favor those on the front we can see here I'm just going to make this good to firm to get a bit more data in the window we can see here that um, in actual fact those on the front have got a pretty poor record and although it's not a strong bias um, on quicker ground we can see that you know those weighted with um, in fact prominent are kind of around about 0.5 percent ignoring the middle runners mid div are about the same ignoring the middle runners and and held up slightly advantaged so it's better to ride a waiting race from the back but on the front is not the place to be over a mile and a half at york um so i don't actually want to go into too much form on in this video um, a because there isn't time and B because I haven't done enough homework to um, <laughs> to sound even vaguely knowledgeable in that context um, so I just wanted to point that out about the the mile and a half trip um, this the second race is a 22 runner six furlong handicap so they will be spread across and again we can just check our graphic and we can see that the six furlong trip is a straight six where they start um, right up at the tops, kind of in a shoot off the 
off the top of the home bend um, and they just run straight for the line. It's a pretty flat um, six. And we can look at draw and pace again here. And again, I'm going to assume that it might dry out a little bit. Um, and we can see, if we can see here that on certainly on the data from 2009 onwards, looking at the percentage of rivals beaten, there's a there's an advantage towards low. Um, but the the actual pace you can also see here actually that uh, as well as that advantage towards low, being hard against the high rail has also um, been kind of beneficial. So you can see um, sort of 17, 17 and up have done pretty well. Um, and uh, if we then look at the actual draw, the actual, um, let me just make this a bit smaller if I can, so we can get all of the runners into the window. Oh, that's annoying. Let's try. There we go. Right, okay. It's a little bit smaller than ideal, but um, we've now achieved what I wanted to do so um, we can see that those horses that led have got a pretty good record as well over this six furlong trip um, even in you know in big fields on good ground and um, this guy Dakota Gold uh, has a very high draw 21 going to bag that rail in the low draws maybe just Frank and or Boogie Time are worth a, a second glance um, just because they they're close enough to the rail to bag it, presumably they'll get away in front of these two, and um, uh, they have a favoured run style, so they might be horses that are worth uh, more than a second glance in that race. Again, we can overlay the um, the the draw pace uh, heat map here, and we can see that what we discussed that it, low and or lead seems to be a kind of an optimal um, optimal approach and in that context the horses that I mentioned already plus a few others uh, might be of interest this Bergerac always seems to run his race and um, I'm sure they'll be betting each way 10 places or something yeah, I'd say he's going to be pretty hard to kick out of the frame um, almost <laughs> as, as far as anything in a 22 runner 6 furlong sprint handicap can be almost a bet to nothing Bergerac each way with extra places uh, so that's that's that race there. Looking further ahead, the yeah, nothing else there of interest. Let's have a look at the Thursday card. So we've got a mile handicap here, Hambledon handicap, um, class two, fifteen runners, and. Um, this mile trip again see this is the one where we've got this devilish bend uh, in buggerance for those in bugger lugs a uh, bit of an in joke this week um, the name bugger lugs was disallowed by the BHA naming committee uh, so the horse was hastily renamed sling your hook <laughs> I'm not sure that's better um, Anyway, we can see here quite clearly that um, uh, under these conditions, so good ground, uh, 14 plus runner handicap, we can see this sort of red zone here for horses that are essentially inconvenienced by that bend and this green zone here for those that are not. Um, so again, just looking at um, you know situational advantage, Cruyff Turn and Lion Tower in the inside boxes have that benefit whether there's a form case to be made for them you need to go away and look but that's certainly a substantial leg up for them when compared with let's say bless him or Isla Kay so Isla Kay will try to go forward in actual fact Isla Kay has a bit of a chance because there isn't a ton of uh, need the lead or prominent types inside him so both Isla Kay and Garden Oasis may may be able to get across fairly cheaply from their extremely wide draws um, normally in a, in a normal 15 runner race we'd expect some of these you know this kind of middle three quintiles to be more prominent races but on recent history at least they've all been ridden with more restraint early so in this particular case these guys might be able to get across um, 
this is the kind of information that Gigi's users can get hold of very easily uh, and it's actually quite difficult in most other places to 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 dial in so quickly to the situational advantage and disadvantages in a field so that is that um, is there anything else that I want to pick out around draw and pace on Thursday mm, no I don't think so um, and then on Friday we've got we haven't got the um, we haven't got the the 48 hour declarations for this yet so these field sizes will change um, just again to be aware of those races where uh, so this seven furlong race is going to be a full field let's have a quick look at that one because again the seven furlong distance starts in a chute starts here um, and as is often the case with races that start on this kind of tangential chute uh, uh, a straight that um, cuts the corner of the home bend what can happen is those horses it happens at Wolverhampton as well the seven furlongs there which has a very similar configuration um, the horse is drawn very low if they're if they're not well away they can get squeezed out they can get squeezed for room as the main body of runners hit hit the um, hit the straight proper and um, what also can happen is those drawn wider have an opportunity if they've got a bit of tactical speed if they can get from the gate quite quickly they've got an opportunity to cut this corner here so they don't have to go straight and then and then make a turn they can almost go a straight line through the um, through the tangent of the of the arc if you like through the through through the corner of the home straight not sure I explained that particularly well but hopefully you can understand the um, the benefit that can be bestowed on a fast starter from a wider stall um, that's again by way of I'm just going to make this I'm going to assume it's sort of 14 to or I'll leave it at 16 plus runners that's again by way of um, um, contextualizing bringing to life the draw and really you know if you're not doing that if, if you're not familiar with a with a, a a course constitution I'd very much encourage you to um, <clears throat> to use those maps to, to to guide you a little bit to, to think about you know if you if you were a, a jockey on a horse in a big field coming out of those stalls what are the considerations you've got in terms of trying to get a position sometimes it's easy sometimes like these um, these from the mile here or from the seven furlong shoot sometimes it's a bit more tactical and you've got to you know if your horse is a beat slow you've got to think on your feet where, where are you going next so also when you think about such things you, you'll probably have a slightly uh, more forgiving understanding of what it's like to, <laughs> to be a rider in a big field handicap um, often not a straightforward task so what we can see here anyway with this seven furlong trip is basically what I've said is um, so those drawn high um, they've got to navigate around all of those inside them to, to get that advantageous um, kind of streamline through the bend those drawn low can get a little bit um, uh, caught in traffic on the inside here and those in the middle have kind of the best of both worlds and that's what we see with the charts here in terms of low middle and high um, and again we can see that in the um, the PRB3 chart um, for the constituent stool so we can see that the benefit is sort of in the right in the middle there uh, although it is it is in terms of percentage drivers being it's a pretty pretty fair overall picture but just be aware of what can happen if you're on the inside on the seven furlong trip in a big field not just here at York but um, any track where they use a shoot Wolverhampton as I say is another example of that um, that's probably all I want to say today I think I want you to go away and um, as I'm sure you will uh, have some fun looking at the race cards for York it's an absolutely fantastic um, three days of racing I'm lucky enough to be there Wednesday and Thursday and thoroughly looking forward to that should be great fun great sport winners won't be easy to come by but they'll reward you if you can find them and I hope very much that Gigi's will help you to find them uh, so that's it for this 
shorter, slightly shorter uh, edition of Gold Nuggets, looking at the York draw and pace. And I uh, wish you good luck. I'll speak to you soon. Matt Pisonio saying goodbye for now.